my adventures and misadventures in reading during 2023. I read 39 books during 2023. I don't know whether that's a lot compared with other people. Maybe you could just let me know in the comments. I think that's not too bad. And today I want to consider some of the things that have stood out for me over the year. Now, these are not books written in or published in 2023 necessarily, but just books that I have read. And this is not necessarily only about the highlights, but also some of the lowlights and perhaps missteps as well that I've made during the year. It's been an interesting and diverse year for me in many ways. Of course, I've read a lot of fiction, as I always do, but I've also ventured into some non-fiction, which is a bit unusual for me. And you'll find on my reading list a mix of newish books, but also some classic books that I thought, well, maybe I should go back and have a look at that. There are also a few TV link-ups uh, with some of the reading as well. And the first one of those is actually Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials series. I remember beginning to read these books many, many years ago, although I'd forgotten that until I started reading them again. I must have read the first two books uh, several years ago. Uh, I don't think the third book had been written yet at that stage, and I subsequently forgot about them. Then I was spurred on to read them by the TV series. Sometimes when you're comparing books with a movie or series that's been made from them, you'll like the book more than the series or the series more than the book. In this occasion, I actually enjoyed the TV series rather more than the books. I thought they successfully streamlined the story and got rid of some of the clutter and chaos and confusion that particularly comes into the third volume. As I mentioned, I'm also endeavouring to go back and read some classic literature, either again or for the first time. Dickens is an author that I've never quite been able to get into. I've always struggled with him. I have previously read David Copperfield and Great Expectations. In 2023, I tackled Oliver Twist. Now, I did quite enjoy it, but I do find Dickens' caricatures a bit tiresome and obvious at times. Perhaps in their day, they would have had some novelty value that they lack today. I also started to read A Tale of Two Cities, but I, I tired of it fairly quickly. One of my rereads for this year was Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. It was on our book club reading list for this year. I still loved it. I loved it the first time I read it. It's heaps better than the movie in this case. But rereading it did reveal some flaws in the plot. It's a very complex plot and it's not surprising that there are a few uh, things that don't quite work. But I didn't notice these on the first read through, and I suspect that further reading might reveal more of these. Nevertheless, it's a highly enjoyable, very clever book. Just as a brief aside, I've also just read Slade House by the same author, David Mitchell, which is set in the same universe as his other novel called The Bone Clocks. The Bone Clocks is a very good read, and Slade House, set in the same universe, is, is entertaining, fairly simple, and fairly short read. Again, as part of my classic literature quest, I ventured into the world of H.P. Lovecraft. I read the Dulwich Horror, as well as some uh, short stories set in that same universe. Now, I ventured into Lovecraft because I hear his name so often, particularly in the area of horror, stroke horror fantasy. Often it appears in uh, adjectival form, Lovecraftian, to describe some book. I would have to say that I really wasn't particularly impressed. It, to me, it was just pulp fiction. Perhaps it's just something of its time. Still with the classics, although very ser seriously classical this time, I reread both The Odyssey and The Iliad by Homer in a new translation by Emily Wilson. I really enjoyed her translation. It, it made the book so much more readable without, I think, losing any of their classical or epic impact. 
Of the two, I still think The Odyssey is a much more interesting and entertaining story. Far too many long, boring battle scenes in the Iliad and long lists of who killed who and where they all came from. This year, as I mentioned, I also made some fairly rare but significant digressions into the world of non-fiction. For example, I read SPQR, A History of Ancient Rome by Mary Beard. I love this period of history and I must admit that part of my inspiration for, for reading this was to improve my general knowledge of that era so that I could answer more trivia questions should they arise on that topic, not that they do very often. I also read Heroes, Mortals and Monsters, Quests and Adventures, which is an entertaining and light-hearted exploration of some of Greek mythology by Stephen Fry. This is another of my favourite topics, again, especially in trivia, but I just really enjoy reading in that area and answering questions in that area. Back to fiction now, and The Road by Cormac McCarthy is a powerfully moving but deeply grim and depressing novel. Look, it's, I think it's a great book, but don't read it if you want to be cheered up. Back into nonfiction, and Just Kids, uh, a memoir by Patti Smith, the proto-punk singer, but really the poet, Patti Smith. It catalogues her life in the 1960s and through the 1970s, particularly with her soulmate, the photographer Robert Mapplethorpe. It offers great insight into her life as well as the creative world of New York at that time. Drop names like Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Allen Ginsberg. It opened that world up to me again, opened me up to her music, which I subsequently listened to and led me down some other musical paths, interesting musical paths as well. The final book I want to mention is by Bonnie Garmus and it's called Lessons in Chemistry. It was published in 2022 and I read it as one of our book club books this year in 2023. It's a deeply moving and at times very humorous novel about the struggle in the 1950s and 60s of a female chemist who's trying to gain some kind, any kind of recognition in that male dominated world at the time. She finds success as the host of a live TV cooking show in which she applies her knowledge of chemistry to cooking. It's also a passionate love story and it tackles many other social issues of the day, not just feminist issues, but also racism. Although it's nowhere stated in the book, the main protagonist, Elizabeth Zott, is surely somewhere on the autism spectrum, perhaps with Asperger's. And this contributes to both the comedy and tragedy of the novel. It's certainly the best book that I read this year. And Apple TV made an eight-part mini-series of the book starring Brie Larson. The series is also very good, though different from the book in significant ways. I think they messed unnecessarily with the plot in places, as they so often do, and missed some important nuances. But Brie Larson is very good as Elizabeth Zott. This was the highlight for me in reading this year, and I recommend both the book and the TV series to you.